Hello, my name is Sharon Fitzpatrick and welcome to my YouTube channel, Lifestyle with Sharon. So I'm going to give you a nice dinner idea because um, sometimes we do get stuck for ideas for dinner. So I'm going to suggest a nice chickpea and broccoli burger. Makes a change from your normal burgers. Uh, you don't have to be a vegetarian to like it. They are delicious because it's good to alternate between some meat dishes and some vegetarian dishes, I think, personally. So today I'm going to do this one. It goes really nice with coleslaw and salad. So you can put it in a bun or you can serve chips with it. But anyway, I'm going to show you this video now, so I hope you enjoy it. And if you do like it, do give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends on social media, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to give you that gentle reminder of when the videos come out. So enjoy. Right, so these are the ingredients that we need for this burger. And we need one tin of chickpeas. Normally I would use a, a lemon, a fresh lemon, but I actually forgot to get the lemon when I went shopping earlier. So I've always got this as a backup, um, just a squeeze of lemon juice. We have paprika, a nice hot paprika is good, but normal paprika would be fine. Some turmeric, some coriander. Again, you can use fresh ingredients. Today I'm just going to be using the dried stuff. Cumin, some sea salt, some black pepper, broccoli, one onion and some tahini. If you haven't got any tahini, you can have peanut butter instead if you wanted. And if you don't want to use an egg, if you want the vegan option, you can put an extra spoonful of tahini in. And we need some breadcrumbs. You can make these yourself, of course, of stale bread, or you can just buy a packet like I've done, just for convenience. And we need one egg. So with the chickpeas, you just put it into a colander, drain the juice, and then just give them a quick rinse. We're going to dice the onion up now. So as usual, we'll go from root end to root end. And then you peel the onion. Now, as usual, make sure you've got a tea towel underneath your chopping board. Stop it slipping. And we don't want to cut the root end off. We want to cut the other end off first and keep that bit intact. And then cut along here. And then you want to just cut along there lots of times. Keeping your fingers bent so you don't cut yourself. And then just cut some broccoli up. into little tiny pieces like that. Now today I'm going to be using a food processor. If you don't have a food processor, it's okay. You can just put that into a bowl and, and mash up the things and, and mix it well. This just makes it more convenient and easy. So, first of all, we're going to put our onions in. Now we're going to add our breadcrumbs. I'm going to put one teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of turmeric, half a teaspoon of cumin. Right, and we want two teaspoons of coriander. Nice big generous spoonfuls. It's probably more like three teaspoons in there. Now we want to have some sea salt. We want a teaspoon of black pepper. And normally I'd squeeze half a lemon and some lemon zest. But today I'm just going to do a few drops of like three squirts of the lemon. We're going to put the lid on for a minute and give this a quick whiz. Now we want to add our chickpeas, and as I said, if you're doing this by hand, you can just mash that with the potato masher. Then we'll put one egg, you can just put that straight in. We'll put our broccoli in, I've got about half a broccoli here. We have here a jar of tahini, um, this was a bit of a nightmare to open, um, but there's a trick to that. If you get a jar that's really, really tight and hard to open, run this under boiling hot water, the lid part, and then when you try and pop it open, it's very simple. Now with tahini, it does kind of separate, so you need to make sure you give it a really good mix. It's very runny at the top and very thick and gooey at the bottom. So you have to make sure you do give it a mix before you use it. And as I said, if you've got peanut butter, instead of this, you can use that as an alternative. But I love tahini. It just gives it that lovely flavour. It looks very different now. It's still quite thick. So you want two tablespoons of this, roughly. Even maybe three. Just try and judge it. And get a second spoon to kind of take it off like that. Gooey stuff, but it's great. So we'll put the lid on and give it another quick whiz. And maybe about halfway through, just take that lid off and just get the spatula and, and mix it around a little bit and then put the lid back on and give it another whiz. So we're just going to take the, the blades out and take this off and then we'll just dish this out into our bowl. Now it's quite sticky, but that's how you want it. So just get a knife and scrape it off. Right, so now we want to just get some breadcrumbs and put that on a plate. 
or some kind of dish. And then this is where the messy bit comes. You get a handful, round about that kind of size, and just make it into some kind of ball, and then flatten it onto the breadcrumbs. Now, if you find this is a bit too sticky, add a little bit of flour into your mixture. Turn it around, just rub it into the breadcrumbs. And do the sides, give it another dip, spread some over, give it a good coating of the breadcrumbs. Now you can make this into any shape you want, you can make it into a circular shape or you can make it into a cutlet shape, you can do whatever you like. I'm going to make it into a round shape and they can be as small or as big as you want. And then you want to place these onto a little plate and then you'll put them in the fridge for at least half an hour. So as I said, just get a bit in your hand, squeeze it up into some kind of ball shape roughly, so it's a little bit firmer, and then you just squash it down into the breadcrumbs, just pat it down, turn it over, and even spread some more breadcrumbs on the top, and turn it around, some more over, make sure it gets a good coat of the breadcrumbs, and just kind of, if you want to get the sides, just turn it around, and there you have your burger shape. As you can see with this one, I did it a slightly different shape, so kind of an oblong cutlet shape. You can do whatever you like. You can experiment and do like fish finger shapes or triangle shapes if you wanted. Have fun with them. So I'm just going to put these in the fridge for about half an hour to an hour, and then we're going to fry them. And we'll serve them with some nice homemade coleslaw, which I'll put in the description below for the link for how to do so that. I have a hot pan, some olive oil, and I'm just going to place the burgers into the pan and cook these for about four or five minutes roughly on each side. If you feel the oil absorbs um, into the breadcrumbs, just top it up with some more olive oil. And you want to cook this on a, a low to medium heat. Oh, nice, they've got a beautiful colour to them, haven't they? They look really, really nice. And what you want to do is, just before it's finished cooking, you want to sprinkle a bit of cheese on it. This is optional, of course. Just sprinkle a bit of cheese. You can just put the lid on it and let the cheese melt. So here's one of the burgers without the cheese. That looks yummy, doesn't it? And here's one with the cheese. I cooked a few new potatoes earlier to go with this. I'm going to serve this with some homemade coleslaw, which I'll put the link below. That goes really, really nice with these burgers. So I'm going to do a few bits of beetroot and some salad leaves so there you have your nice chickpea and broccoli burger one without the cheese and one with the cheese served with some new potatoes and salad well thank you for watching today's video on how to make this lovely chickpea and broccoli burger and i look forward to doing more videos for you take care